Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. One of the most important dynamic hours of the week is the week in which we have Harley Schlanger, one of the other amazing people from the LaRouche Foundation. We don't just point out problems or analyze the news like the major snooze media. Uh, some of the best news out there, by the way, is at Fox News Network. Uh, sometimes CNN actually has, is balanced. But most of the time, the other networks are completely ridiculous, trying to cover up uh, the errors of a, of a psychopathic president that basically now thinks he has a mandate to do whatever he pleases. So, Harley, tell us the latest. I heard he's having a, quote, answering questions, but when we analyze what he's literally putting out there to deal with a fiscal cliff in Benghazi, it's just ridiculous. Well, I heard a joke yesterday. Someone said that what Obama's proposed to deal with the fiscal cliff is the Pentagon is going to have to lay off about 500 mistresses. So <laughs> that's they're, going a good to do one. A, they're going to do a reality show about the situation. It's going to be called The Real Housewives of CENTCOM. Oh, no. So has so got a good sense I mean, of humor. Uh, the fact well, is, this is a distraction. What, what I have from my sources, we talked about this with Western Journalism last week with Carl Gallup's. Western journalism has their inside source in the White House that the only way you can make sense of them delivering a now dying from smoke inhalation uh, uh, ambassador to the emergency department locally is that the real scheme was to actually kidnap him and exchange him for the blind shake like this source says. If you were real terrorists, first off, these two special forces agents weren't in the loop. They, they purposely had numerous cables to say they needed additional uh, support. They didn't just attack there, they attacked the other site a, a mile away. So we know that, at the very least, this is incompetence and the greatest. This was actually uh, Obama trying to grandstand like he did over killing Osama bin Laden, who's long dead from renal failure, so that he well, could use this as an election ploy. And I believe that Dr. this was all planned to be the October surprise. And... Uh, I think that that's the most logical thing because you can't make sense of it otherwise. At the very end, well, it isn't look, true. I, I'm not. If, I, but what we're trying to do at, at EIR and the Rouge Pack is stick mm -hmm. to those things that are indisputable because it may well, well be the, that the, the, the blind well ship was involved. It may well be there were prisoners. Well, let, let's, say we don't, let's, let's say we don't. Let's say we don't include that. At the very yeah, least, let's, not, let's not include that, and let's just well, stick well, to what well, let, let, Let's stick to you. Well, that's what we have from over there, but let's say we exclude that. We have Susan Rice and Obama feigning anger today that he's angry that uh, Senator McCain and Senator Lindsey Graham say they're not going to, uh, to advance or to become Secretary of State. This is crazy. We have Susan Rice saying she's been properly briefed. When she noted Darren well, she was briefing information that showed that there was a concerted attack and it wasn't just spontaneous from the video. It's the same foolishness that Obama put out on these talk shows. We know that there's a serious cover-up, and then we have to find out why. And the only the why behind it is, why did they not supply either further uh, support or close the embassy and remove him from there? So the, why why goes is, back, the why goes back before that, though. And you see, this is... Yeah. A lot of what's coming out now is confetti and fog. You know, the the fact that Petraeus had an affair, well, that just tells you that he's not the great hero that people had painted him to be. Right. But the real issue is that there's something wrong around the whole Obama foreign policy. One of the one of the reasons I say Petraeus is not a hero is that he bought into the drone policy, and he was bringing the CIA into that kind of militarization, which is against its mandate. But right. more importantly, the whole policy is wrong. The whole policy is oriented toward a war with Syria. That's why the whole Libya thing was done. That's why Gaddafi was killed. That's why after Gaddafi was killed, LaRouche went out with a warning that these guys have destroyed a couple of countries already. They're targeting Syria, but their real target is Russia and China. Now, whose benefit in the United States is that? It's none of us. There's no benefit for us to have a, a World War III in the Middle East or a nuclear war. This only would benefit those people who are trying to break the, the back of Russia and China and get them to submit to a globalized dictatorship. And Russia and China won't do it. And so Obama is sticking to the policy which so far has left uh, tens of thousands of people dead each, each month in the Middle East, a policy of religious warfare. And the, the argument that this guy had in the campaign that he's brought Islamic fundamentalism under control is a complete fraud. And that's why the cover-up on Benghazi, 
is designed on the surface mm-hmm. to cover up the failure of the policy to deal with Al Qaeda, or you might say the success of the well, policy that, of promoting Al Qaeda. That's part of it, but here's the other side of it. Obama wants to be everything to everyone. He wants to be the family man with his local family, but he wants to support gay and lesbians and give everybody not only abortion rights, but abortion rights right up to the delivery date. He wants to look good to the Muslims because he had curtsies before the Saudi Arabian king, and he also wants to, to, to be seen by these people like the three years uh, speech three years ago that he's a great hero and he's going to bring peace to the Middle East. And in fact, I guarantee you that his current policy telling the Israelis they have to go back to the 67 border and trying to appoint uh, Susan Rice to the uh, United Nations, to the Secretary of State, to the uh, to deal with these issues, and a new uh, powers is the one he's looking at putting in the United Nations. They're planning on trying to talk, talk about partitioning the state of Israel, which will guarantee an even more likelihood of a future major flashpoint there between the new state of Palestine and the new state of Israel. It'll be even on smaller territory. This is very dangerous, but he doesn't collaborate with the Israelis, and his whole policy is he's going to apologize this into World War III. You can't well, even worse. Arm, yeah, even worse. And, he, and then they come up with a with a false statement from the State Department that they're sorry that 90 percent of the weapons are getting in the hands of Al Qaeda and people we don't want to have them. And then the U.S. government, along with NATO, are trying to vet what they consider is the team of the Syrian Free Army, and then getting you know, European nations to kind of say, yeah, we believe these are in the Arab League to kind of back them. So they've called exactly what they want in their elements of the so-called coalition. I mean, this is completely stage managed by Obama and his uh, minions. Well, this coalition is not a serious coalition. It's a fig leaf on top of Al-Qaeda. What, what I was saying before... Exactly. Exactly. That's, Benghazi, that's the point. Benghazi was nothing but a continuation of a policy of arming Al-Qaeda. And that's what the Obama policy is. That's what the British-Saudi policy is that Obama is a part of. Now, the other part of Benghazi is what they're covering up is the fact that this has been U.S. policy since 2001, to cover up for the Saudis and to work together with this British-Saudi imperial force in the Middle East. Now, this is what was involved in the original 9-11. This is what was involved in the work we did in Afghanistan where Americans thought they were giving money privately to aid uh, honest people fighting against the Soviet Empire. And what it went through is a Saudi network, which included bin Laden, which was involved in building a jihadist force to take over Afghanistan once the the Soviets were driven out. So our policy for 40 years has been to promote and defend Islamic fundamentalists. We're continuing to, to support Islamic fundamentalists who are targeting Xinjiang province in China. We're continuing through the British to support and defend the Chechen and Dagestan and South Ossetian terrorists, Muslim jihadists who are targeting Russia. So this is a clear policy. And when Obama starts throwing a fit about Susan Rice, what he's got to realize is that not everybody is willing to see the United States destroyed on behalf of this Anglo-Saudi network. Yeah, but here's another thing that I've found out from my research, is that what's really going on the past three or four years is there's been an actual proxy war between the Sunni and Shiite. That Saudi Arabia <coughs> and in Iran and its allies Syria and Hezbollah in Lebanon have been, in a sense, building up toward a big war, and now with the change in regime in Egypt, uh, Saudi Arabia thought they were going to fall into the hands of the Saudis and side with them. And what the Chinese did is come in with a, a promise of $200 billion investment and 150 factories. That they, But the part of their, uh, their proviso was that we'll come in, but you have to no longer be allied, Egypt, with Saudi Arabia. You have to ally with Iran. And uh, what's really lighting up here is the chess players for a very great Mideast war with Russia and China being the real masters of the game. And that's what you're exactly right. Uh, What Obama's doing is playing up to World War III. We don't watch it real soon.
Welcome back, and let's focus the conference. Uh, tomorrow is going to be on, the hearings are on Benghazi. Uh, what's your analysis, Harley, of, the, uh, of this? How is this going to play up? Because we have more questions than answers. But when you look at the pattern here, uh, as the old story goes, when the cover is this extensive, when the number of players that are involved uh, that are collaborating in a cover-up, we know there's something very serious to cover up. We just don't know exactly what it is, whether it's this uh, scheme to make Obama look like a hero, like Rambo in the White House, uh, or it's something nastier. Uh, the fact is we know this is a transshipment point for weapons to arm al-Qaeda, and in fact, although we say we're at enemies with al-Qaeda, we know that most of these weapons went at the hands of a militia coming from countries as far away well, as Pakistan again, again, and it's everywhere. Worse so, than that. It's worse than yeah. that. We gave the weapons to networks that we could have known were al-Qaeda in Libya, yeah. To get exactly. Rid of and so then they tried to apologize policy, afterward that, yeah. yeah. This they tried to apologize in the way, Libya yeah. was a policy of, of supporting and promoting Saudi selected terror networks, including Al Qaeda. Well, that's the first point. And that should come up in the. Now, here's the problem with the hearings. John McCain is doing the right thing on Benghazi, but remember, John McCain was a big supporter of getting rid of Gaddafi. And he and John Kerry allied together to keep Obama from having to go under the War Powers Act to the Congress. So, you know, I'm not sure exactly what McCain will do, but there are senators there who are asking the right questions. Though Dianne Feinstein is saying that she wants to know what went on. She may be doing this to try and make it seem as though it's not just Republicans. But I'll tell you, here's what people should look for with the hearings tomorrow. There's going to be an attempt by the White House to say, we have an investigation going on by the State Department, the so-called Pickering Committee, and they're going to put out their findings. And until then, we're not going to participate with this because this is very important uh, classified material. We don't want this out in the public. Now, that's going to be the typical attempt to stonewall. But you're right about one other point. There's so much out there already that you can't just cover it up. And what people are seeing now is there is a cover-up. And the cover-up, the crime was bad in this case. The crime was that four Americans were killed because of errors, whether they were deliberate or not, but errors in the policy. Now, in Watergate, no one was killed. This time also, the president who presided is seen clearly as a liar. And he lied about the deaths of four Americans. But so what why else did he lie? Well, well, why did he lie, though? See, uh, if we look for at his this presidential like, campaign, for his reelection well, let's turn, campaign. Let's turn it into a kind of a medical thing. Let's say it's not Benghazi. Let's say we have a patient that comes in an emergency and they have a swollen red abdomen. Now, we don't know why it's swollen red, but we assume right away that they've got something bad, something blocked, uh, or they've got an infection, or they've got a tumor that's blocking something. So what we have is we have a nurse that comes in and she says, well, I don't think it's fine. She's rubbing the abdomen and say, you know, I think he's actually stable enough to go home. And, and the doctor walks in and says, what do you mean go home? And he looks at the abdomen and says, oh my gosh, he plinks it and he says, oh my God, this patient's got ascites. I got to drop the fluid, see if there's cancer, infection. We need blood gases. We need everything done. And she's, no, 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 he can, he can probably go home. So think of Susan Rice as being the nurse that walks in the room, and she's being the person. Now, the intake uh, people in the emergency department, uh, we're calling them CIA, they know this guy's unstable that's coming with a bloated-up abdomen, but they're trying to tell us that there's not really a problem here. There's no problem. The fact, the fact is they probably have an obstructed bowel caused by a tumor, and there's very likely secondary sepsis. We've got something septic going on in the government, and they're covering it up. And the cover-up is so extensive, it means it's got to be something really bad. There are two Whatever things, it is, it's got to be really two, bad. There are two, two points. One is Obama's whole story is that he's the commander-in-chief who got bin Laden and got al-Qaeda. And this yeah, shows that, that we, did, we did not get al-Qaeda. But secondly, he lied to the families of the victims of 9-11 when he said he would declassify the documents on the Saudi connection. He lied. He never did that. And so those documents are still classified. And meanwhile, he's in an alliance with the people who funded 9-11, who fund the jihadist terrorists in Iraq who are, who are killing American soldiers, in Afghanistan who are killing American soldiers, <clears throat> and in Syria who are killing Syrian civilians and Syrian government people. Well, so that, our yeah. whole policy is to ally ourselves with terrorists. Now then, they did this phony conference in Doha 
uh, Qatar the other day where Hillary Clinton was there, where they pulled together what they're now calling the Syrian National Commission. And yesterday, Francois Hollande, the president of France, said that France recognizes them as the official government, and as soon as they have a transitional government in place, the French will give them arms. Uh, Cameron of Britain said the same thing. He said, now that Obama's reelected, this was the day after the U.S. elections, now that right. Obama's reelected, we can go ahead and arm the uh, Syrian opposition. Now, who's fighting on the ground in Syria? It's not the people who live in France and Britain and uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, because those are Syrian exiles who are the so-called moderates. The people who are doing the suicide bombings and the killing in Syria, as you said, are Pakistanis, they're Libyans, they're Saudis, they're Britons, they're, everywhere. they're Chechnyans, they're from everywhere. They're even British citizens that are there Saudi. flying it. They're even British citizens that are part of the of these networks. In fact, the main Hanitis where they actually plan it is London, England. Yeah, also known as Londonistan. Londonistan, yeah, exactly. So what we have here is Obama is acting as a functionary for the British MI5, MI6 to control the drug trade. They're in there actually knowing that there's a proxy war going on for about five years now between between Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and the Arab Emirates, and Iran and its allies, Syria, etc. They know that now Egypt has fallen into the sphere of China, who's directly allied with Iran. This is really pulling in Russia and China with hooks in their jaws like the ancient prophecies. Of, and, and it's uh, not, just, it's not yeah. just that they know it, it's, this is what they want. Right, and this what's is happening policy. is... This, their policy is actually to inflame it to eventually close the Strait of Hormuz, pull China in, which has now got 90% of the oil from Iraq, from Gulf War II. It was literally given to them as part of this deal, probably to continue buying our Treasury notes. And uh, they're literally aggravating the heck out of the Russians and Chinese and saying, we're going to continue to do allow this. And now the head of Turkey is requesting Patriot II systems to be placed over Syrian territory in violation of international law and the uh, NATO mandate. This is craziness, and it's going to result in... in now we have Egypt, by the way, that's now allied with Iran. They, nobody's saying but this, now, but that's but part now, of the deal. This is, why, this is why we're hearing so much about Petraeus, about General Allen, about Jill Kelly. Oh, yeah. Because they're, they're, it's a classic case of, of throwing up as much confetti as possible and smoke. So right. the real story doesn't get out. Now, the Senate and the House members have to be focused like a laser on the fact that we lost an ambassador, we lost three other people, because the obvious warnings that were sent out, including the fact that there were two attempts to bomb the U.S. consulate there, the British pulled out, the Red Cross pulled out, uh, everyone knew Benghazi was dangerous. So why is it that nothing was done to protect them? And that's the first story. The second story is once it happened, why was nothing done to send troops in? And exactly. then the third story is why did Susan Rice and others make up this ridiculous story about the anti Mohammed videotape leading to demonstrations that got out of control? I now, think that, that's, uh, but I think Petraeus was being leaned on to make the story fall in line with the rest. Welcome back, and uh, from the uh, president's statement, uh, the abominator, uh, and what's on the table, I don't think there's going to be a, a reasonable compromise. Of course, today on CNN, they have uh, uh, the head of Berkshire Hathaway, uh, Warren Buffett, talking about this, but the real issue is not to raise taxes in a recession. This is just economics 101. You don't do that. And austerity fascism contracts economies, which is why there's riots all over Europe. Uh, what they need to do is get Glass-Steagall in, uh, write off the debt permanently, uh, make the two failed banks uh, fail, and uh, put credit back in like LaRouche talks about the Hamiltonian credit so we can actually start building infrastructure and small and medium business have capital. Uh, make sure you don't destroy the social safety net and control costs so you can provide health to everybody at a reasonable cost without a lot of the doctors quitting and the health care system falling around our ears. Uh, we don't Here's see the any first of this point. Here's yeah. the first point on this. The whole idea of a fiscal cliff was a term that Bernanke used back in February of, I think, 2012 to describe something that was done to avoid having a policy discussion. Uh, right. There's nothing magical about $16.4 trillion 
that's suddenly going to plunge us off a cliff. If we actually had a competent economic policy, we could even go a little bit more into debt, provided it was in the form of credit going to real production. That's yeah. what Hamilton did at the beginning of our nation's history. But the it's an arbitrary cliff that's made up because they figure they need some uh, club over the head of the politicians to get them to negotiate. Now, the people who are running this thing, and they're even above Obama, it's, and it's not Buffett, it's not businessmen, it's Wall Street banks, City of London banks, and what they're basically saying is, we've got to do in the United States what they're doing in Europe. We've got to kill people with budget cuts, and we've got to increase taxes. And that gives more power to the banks, not to the government. The governments are hostage to these banks. And so this is the policy that's coming out of the city of London and Wall Street. Now, you mentioned Europe. You know, today there was a general strike in Greece, Portugal, and Spain. In Spain, people were killing themselves rather than allow their houses to be taken away. There were three cases of suicide last weekend of people who were being foreclosed on. So the president of Spain said, well, he's going to stop the foreclosures. No one believes him. So you have these very large demonstrations in Spain and Portugal. Now, meanwhile, what does Mario Monti in Italy do? He meets with uh, Cameron to pledge Italian support for a no-fly zone over Syria. The Italians are so broke, who's going to pay for this? I'll tell you, the United States. Well, what they're going to do is they're trying to turn, this is the scheme, and Obama's part of it from the British, uh, the city of Londonistan. The uh, Mile Square City plans on using the debt monster of the Federal Reserve to literally collapse the world economy, not just here, but in China and Russia and everywhere, and then have the domination using this debt monster literally consume every single state on the planet, and they will become vassals to the the royal emperor of the banksters. I mean, that's what's going on. They want to collapse it, so now they're, they're because basically when you elect officials, they handle laws governing behavior, and 90% of what they do are laws governing money, the raising of money and the spending of money. When the raising and spending is now handled by an international body that's controlled by bankers, and then money eventually becomes biometric currency by a inter- universal world reserve bank that's literally a mutated Fed Reserve, you no longer have sovereignty, you no longer have any democracy or any representation by any government system. You now have globalist hegemony by a world government that has to have, that completely disconnects from any feedback from the population. And that's where we're headed. It means not just the collapse of America. What Obama is doing and what the Federal Reserve are doing is feeding in this debt monster into Europe and elsewhere that will collapse China, Russia, the Mideast, everywhere. And in the midst of this, billions of people will starve to death as the economy crashes into a full-force, code blue depression. Well, and what you're looking at then is a, uh, a, a situation where the, the policies that are being put forward economically are completely incompetent. And most people know that. People who have a sense of what's happening with the economy can see that what Obama's proposing is not going to balance the budget. What the Republicans are proposing is not going to balance the budget. Uh, the, the, the idea that it's really almost science fiction. Now, why do people believe this? And this is a point LaRouche is making now. He said, look, we've had the right policy for four years, which was get rid of Obama and go with Glass-Steagall. A lot of people agree with us but didn't do anything. So now we've got to start discussing what's wrong with our people that they don't do what's necessary. And this is where you see the the more uh, treacherous aspect of the British Empire, the dumbing down of our nation, the, the stupefaction of the American public, which allows people to vote, you know, African Americans who say it's the not the color of the skin but the content of the character, but they still voted for Obama. So they, they essentially urinated on Dr. King's grave. And that's something that has to be said. I don't know if you saw this, but Tavis Smiley and Cornell West were interviewed by Amy Goodman on uh, Democracy Now! on NPR. And Cornell West, who's an African-American professor, called Obama a crypto-fascist. And he said Obama has nothing in common with progressives. He sometimes talks about the poor, but he has no connection with the poor. He does nothing to help them. 
And this is actually starting to happen in, among intellectual networks in the African American. Yeah, they, they don't get it. We've had our black pastor on last week. We had Bishop E.W. Jackson. He'll talk a good talk. But these people want to be at the table. But with Obama's policies, there won't be anything on the table. There won't be any social safety net. Even when you heard the actual answers, and he didn't expand on it, he should have put a point plan by Romney on, on, on a Republican social safety net that's rational. You know, like, you know, uh, instead of that, what we had is Obama literally got these people who voted for him because either he was black or they thought, well, he's, good, he's the good ego, he's Obama clause. But in actual fact, his policies will take away their entitlements because part of this fiscal cliff policy by Obama is to not just cut defense spending, not just to extract $500 billion from the economy, it's to cut entitlements. And Obamacare is a good example of that, cutting entitlements. And I'm also increasing the costs. Increasing the cost. So doing so exactly words, the opposite yeah. that he says he's going to do. Sure, it's, uh, it's temporarily, about, the corpor- yeah, temporarily the the cost will go up so high that in a few years' time there won't be any private insurance. The cost will not be controlled, and a lot of people will be dead as a result of it. And it's all about how do you make profits for the corporations? Exactly, he's a corporate. That's what we're dealing with. Yeah, yeah. That's he has exactly. a mask that he's a Marxist. He has a mask that he is a man of the people. He's a mask that he's this ultra left wing uh, person, but in actual fact, that's just the facade. The real issue is he's a corporate minion of the British and their austerity fascism, and his, these other things are just masks. Yeah, that, that's all it is. And so the question is why do the American people fall for it? Why did people vote for these candidates? Why did people allow this operation to be run against us? And now I can tell you because I do a lot of radio and and people are calling in and they're saying, I don't like what happened, I don't like the election, what are we going to do now? And I say, what are you going to do now? Well, there's nothing you can do. And I say, well, then get ready to to take it from Obama. Well, I think there's there's several things we can do. The first thing is we can support our congressmen and senators to start impeachment proceeding against Obama because he's incompetent and dangerous. Uh, the second thing we need to do is we need to get Congress to deal with the Hispanic issue with a proper law because the Democrats don't want to solve this problem. The general Democratic Party. I know there's good people like uh, uh, our Democrats that are running through the LaRouche Foundation in District 22, such as Keisha Rogers, that do want to solve it. But the Democrats want this to be an issue in 2016 as well. They don't want to solve it. They'll, they'll pass an executive order. Just like, for example, there's discrimination against people because of orientation or anything else. There's no federal law. So they met with the president yesterday and tried to say that they wanted to have an executive order. You don't have a government by, by fiat and by, by executive rule. You have it by rule of law. But there's people in our society now think that they can go to the president, Obama clause, and he'll just put an executive order to get something that should be in law already, as there is in every state. This is very dangerous. Back in a moment with Harley Schlanger and LaRouchePAC.com, the number 800-259-5791. Welcome back, and uh, yeah, it's a glorious time. You know, it's an interesting thing that we have bright people like the Lewis Foundation. We try to present bright ideas that are out of the box, that don't necessarily have to pour in more money, but need to be innovative, uh, that deal with things, but also deal with real harsh realities, such as the fact is you can't, and, and this is where I'm going to kind of rip, uh, a, how can I say, a new uh, hole for the uh, parties that think that they have the solution. Uh, the Constitutional Party and the Libertarian Party think that they have the solution when they have what we call socially out of out of touch reality kind of everything goes attitude on the other hand they have fiscal uh, autism uh, austerity to the point where autism too austerity to the point where it will crush those people that are weakest in our society uh, it's not rational we need to have a system where we have representative government I like direct government which now with all the electronics and a system where the infrastructure and the people count where uh, you you want to make it attractive to business to be here because we built the infrastructure. I mean, I don't understand why in 2012 we don't have high-speed rail on both coasts and across the country, why we don't have a special networks of uh, to deal with 
with power distribution. So places like the Power Authority in Long Island were so incompetent they're using 25-year-old computers and people still don't have power in many of the areas. I can't understand how uh, we can have a uh, an ambassador repeatedly ask for help and it's denied right up to the president. And if we, we say that they, we have the strongest nation in the history of the world. We have an incompetent Chicago regime that's taken over that are focusing on the narcissistic powers of Obama that put us in grave danger of us apologizing us incompetently into World War III. And we're in the economic phase now, and we soon will be in the military phase because if this war flares up further, which is going to at the rate that Obama's going in this next uh, term, we will be facing incoming nuclear missiles on American territory after an economic crash that's going to get very nasty. So, yeah, all these let people me, want let me to make a couple table. points. Let me make a couple yeah. points that Mr. LaRouche made on Friday night, right. which is that, number one, Obama is not going to have a change in his second term. What we saw in the first oh. term, we're going to get, but only much more aggressively. Because he and, thinks, and no restraint. He thinks he has a mandate now, and he doesn't have yeah. any latitude to deal with Republicans or reach across the aisle. That simply works out. He thinks he won the election in a big way because of his policies. Now, right. most Americans who voted for him were voting against Romney, and most people who voted for Romney were voting against Obama, because right. neither of them presented policies. So you come up with the question, then, where's the mandate? Now, there's no mandate, but Obama, as a narcissist, is being told by the media he can now do what he wants. Right. And what he's doing is that he's going to try to destroy what's left of the American system. And this means our physical production, our infrastructure, our economic development. What he's doing is doing what the British have been trying to do for centuries which is to wipe out the power of the United States, which is in our people. It's in our Republican institutions. It's not in government, and it's not in private sector industry. It's in the population's ability to carry out self-government. Now, most of the time, we don't do a very good job of that, but we've had a few good presidents in history who have, who have done what's right. Now we don't have any leadership. On both parties, the leadership is corrupt. That's why Diane Sarah is running as an independent for governor in New Jersey, because she's pointing out that Chris Christie, as a Republican, helped to destroy the first responders in New Jersey and then embraced Obama in the middle of the storm and worked together with the androgynous Michael Bloomberg, the mayor of New York City. And what yeah. did they provide? They provided a few photo ops and nothing. There are still people without power. There are still people without food and water in the area hit by a hurricane. Two it's weeks only their ago. neighbors that actually took care of them. FEMA, I called a Federal Emergency Magnification Agency, did nothing but try to abscond with people's resources and try to micromanage them when they didn't have anything pre-placed. There were not four-season tents. There were not generators. There was not diesel fuel. There was nothing. They didn't bring in heavy-lift helicopters to try to deal with this. It's just obscene. It just, you know, they could even brought generators even to, the, to these gas stations because a lot of the gas stations had plenty of gas. They just didn't have backup power to pump the gas out, so they couldn't get it out. Well, and now the National Guard is going door to door in certain areas. They were asked, why didn't you get here sooner? And they said, we could have been here the next day. We weren't asked. Now, this just shows the fraud of these administrations. You know, in 1938, when a hurricane hit that same area, Franklin Roosevelt had 100,000 people mobilized within 24 hours to go in and, and move trees, reset up power lines, provide food and water to people. They couldn't do that in New Jersey and New York, partly because there's no intent by either Bloomberg or Governor Christie or Obama to take care of people, to help people. The, gov the government gets in the way. They don't assist things. They don't coordinate things. They don't collaborate. They just get in the way. But government could do that. It's bad leaders in government who don't want to do that, who want to use the government to bail out corrupt banks and immoral speculators, but refuse to let the government do the things they're supposed to do, which is help people in times of, of great stress, like storms and, and war and, and situations like that. The same way they were had neglect of Ambassador Stevens and the other people in Benghazi, they did the same thing in New Jersey. Only the difference is in Benghazi, there's four people killed by gunfire. In New York, New Jersey, it's hundreds of people who died because of government neglect.
Yeah, and also poor planning. I mean, why would you not have a proper seawall? Uh, why would you have these subways that could be flooded? Why would you have generators and power lines that could actually be losing their power? I mean, because a simple have... point, a simple point. They think it's cheaper to let people die than it is to have adequate preparation. And right. For they, example, underground power always, lines. When you're sitting on a coast that's repeatedly hit with storms or periodically every decade. Yeah. Why weren't there buried power lines in areas of danger? Well, if same reason BP decided that they would take the risk that people would die from an explosion and pay off the families, that that would cost them less than they said it would to put in the uh, uh, protection. Now, if you have companies that have that attitude, then don't be surprised, or governments that have that attitude, don't be surprised when people die and they say, all right, we'll give your family $100,000. Uh, that doesn't bring someone back. And, you know, I think this is where the idea that, that was expressed by Franklin Roosevelt, by John Kennedy, of putting people first ahead of private interests. Government can do that. And, you know, in the long run, it's cheaper. It's a lot cheaper to build the infrastructure. Not only that, because than, than to, to have the destruction, because you're creating new wealth when you do those projects. So it's not just a cost that actually produces produces revenue. Exactly. Yeah. Now, of course, we the lesson we have from Hurricane or uh, Sandy was number one. This is almost certainly one that was steered there. We took a ninety degree turn. We had scientists. In fact, he'll be back on the program. He's on every Wednesday. Professor McCanny. We've had Stan Dale and other experts on. This was one that could have been avoided. And even if they couldn't, quote, you can't believe that they could have avoided it, which we've been able to do since the 1960s, with our operation Storm Chaser and programs afterward, which I personally took care of, highly classified people working on these in Colorado at Buckley and Peterson Air Force Base and U.S. Space Command. Number two, there was no planning. No planning for pre-placement of material, no planning. No, they did photo, photo ops for the media, and then Obama left to go to, I think, Las Vegas. And, and here's, here's an important point. Remember how Bush was correctly attacked for his initial response to Katrina. Why was Obama given a pass? And the second point on Bush with Katrina is that as terrible as that was, the Bush administration did then allocate the funds to build a storm surge barrier that protected New Orleans last September when Hurricane Isaac hit. But the Obama administration is refusing to give them a little bit of money to upgrade it, and so they had to increase the taxes on people in the parishes to be able to upgrade it so it will be able to protect them in the future. So we have government at the top levels, whether it's Obama or Bush, that cared not for the security and safety of the American people. And for Obama to be able to parade around saying he's the great defender, is the commander-in-chief of the American people, is a fraud. And in the hearings tomorrow, in the House and Senate on Benghazi, if the Republicans have any guts and any commitment to the truth, they will expose the Obama administration's criminal complicity in the death of our ambassador and three other brave Americans. Absolutely. By the way, also the Russian shakeup means that they're getting ready for a much more hard line against the West and America. And our actions under the abominator are aggravating the situation, not just in the Middle East, but worldwide economically. And we're in the, I call the economic phase and the proxy war phase of WW3. Obama, if we keep him in there without impeachment, we're marching toward the precipice, not just a fiscal cliff, but a cliff dealing with the war that'll end all wars. Thank you.